Graphics and downhill, usually not like the biggest of deals when it comes to boards. Most people buy a board in order of the overall dimensions, then probably the concave, then maybe the construction, then the shape, and then probably last comes the graphic. And honestly, some boards don't even have graphics. Like a lot of brands don't even put them on there. And while a graphic doesn't provide any performance, it does give a sense of brand identity and identity for the person riding it too. Whether it's the race-centric pinstriping of Madrid's 2019 downhill lineup, or the teenage criminal energy of the Prism, uh, I'm calling the cops boards, or the like mind's eye mysticism of a lot of Pantheon's boards, you show a kind of personal sense of identity with whatever that graphic is. I'm kind of making this video because I was looking at a lot of boards and I was seeing a lot of minimalist graphics, whether it's just like carbon to show off the construction or like some line work on the board. I'm seeing a ton of these minimalist styles in graphics. Now I've already discussed my kind of distaste for expensive boards and I understand that putting a graphic on there is only going to add to the expense of the board. But I think that a lot of brands are kind of missing a sense of brand identity by not putting any graphics on their boards. And I also understand that not putting a graphic on there kind of gives this no frills, serious tone to a lot of the boards, which is a brand identity in and of itself. But that whole thing gets really played out really fast when you, you know, it, it, it eventually starts to just come off as like, you don't want to put in the effort to put the graphic together. A lot of times I'll actually confuse brands for one another because they're so similar in what the actual board looks like. They're maybe all black and white, or maybe they're just carbon, or maybe they're just like wood grain or something like that. And it just, I get confused on which one is which. And I think one of the reasons why people don't do this is because when you put art on a board, everybody's gonna be very opinionated about the art that's on there. So you are kind of alienating your buyer group, your target audience to a more limited audience by doing this, but your overall strengthening of the brand identity, I think is worth it. And I started kind of thinking more about these when I was looking at street brands and looking at the graphics that I was seeing there and I was really liking them and that's probably just because the style of art that I like, I was just finding more there. I was also noticing that a lot of these brands actually have a similar vibe that goes with their graphic to kind of give what their interpretation of skating should be. Here's like a good example of like one of these street brands. Now this is Creature. I don't even necessarily even really like these graphics a huge amount, but what I do like is that they have like an exact style, right? They've got like this kind of dark metal, this obviously green is a big color for them. It's very grimy and it kind of gives that kind of feeling within skating of grimy, right? You fall and you've got uh, gravel in you or your shirt that you fell in is all torn up, right? It's got that, that feeling to it. Uh, or FA kind of with their like high art uh, kind of look here just with like a lot of these like mixed materials like this one right here with this stone background uh, on what looks like an oil painting or something like that or Mark Gonzalez's Crooked brand with these extremely light-hearted doodle style drawings uh, kind of highlighting the fun and playfulness and childlike behavior within skateboarding just a lot of just good strong identities within these brands now, I'll be willing to admit that, you know, street brands can put a lot more effort into strictly the graphics because most street brands don't even manufacture their own boards. They just order them from a factory and print their graphics on them. So a lot of these brands are even using the actual same raw materials, same actual press, same concaves even in a lot of these boards. So really the whole brand is like the graphics and the riders that ride for them with their style of skating and like the clothes that they wear. Honestly, a lot of street skating brands are almost more fashion house than they are craftsmen of building boards. I don't even mean that like it's an insult. Like I think that's cool. It kind of gives like a artistic spin to skating, which kind of, you know, gives that idea of skating not necessarily being so sporty, but being so more artistic, which some people like. And it's also probably worth noting that there's some really bad graphics out there in the street world too. 
I think it'd be really cool to see more downhill brands investing in the graphics of their boards more. And there are some brands that are investing within their graphics as well. Just to name one, obvious choice is Pantheon with their, like I said, their more mystical stuff as well as their more like, for instance, the Gaio with their kind of Greek god, goddess kind of vibe. They have a few boards like that. They also have some more typical skateboarding kind of, you know, skulls and things like that. And not to mention, they do have their minimal graphics too, like for instance, this one right here at the Wiggler. But there's a unique feel to Pantheon's boards and I do appreciate the graphics and what they put into them. And that's just one brand. So when you apply a unique graphic identity in your boards, it does alienate some buyers from your brand because not everybody's gonna like that art style. However, with the size of the audience for downhill, it is kind of scary to invest more into a more acute target audience by using specific types of graphics and art styles. But I think people do appreciate these detailed graphics. Not to mention that the more iconic boards that I can think of of the last 10-15 years also have an iconic graphic to go with it.